Metal Hands. Metal Hands. TV. So yeah, Room, it's a new year. Two years ago was a New Year's evening. And yeah, first question, New Year, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing good. Yeah. There's a lot of cool things happening, so I think 2018 will be pretty awesome. Yeah, sounds great. Look forward to I mean, um, we met as personal last year. It was in March. It was it's nearly one year ago. Unbelievable how time the time is flying. And I saw that you are right. in the studio again, first with the Freaks, right? You're recording a new record. Yes, we, um, we're right smack dab in the middle of that, actually. We finished all the tracking, um, and now we're heading into the mixing. And that's why I was a little bit late today, because the guy who's doing the mixing gave me a call and had a bunch of questions, and so we had to go through some of the, uh, the ideas, all that kind of stuff. So it's exciting, yeah. We we got a new record that's going to be coming out pretty soon, and um, yeah, again, looking forward to it. Yeah. It's pretty funny too because uh, the guy who produced it uh, is a German guy. And he, when I told him that I was going to have the interview with you, he goes, "Ah, <laughs> tell him that a uh, a German producer is working with you. Yeah. It might help your record." Yeah, <laughs> nice man. So, we have uh, Reina Frankel, who right. is uh, doing the producing for us, yeah. and um, it's sounding really, really good, you know? He's got a studio with a bunch of really awesome old vintage equipment, yeah. small little like Fender Champ amps and, and Vibrolux amps, and so the sounds are actually pretty awesome. Nice. I also recognize that you will um, tour next year also here in Europe, right? Yeah, and that's the cool thing about this particular um, release and being with Heavy Psych Sounds again, that last time we did the record and after the record we planned the tour and stuff. This time we get to actually know that we're recording the record and then are planning the tour so when it comes out, we'll be able to support it right off the bat instead of waiting six months to get to Europe after the release. So uh, mm -hmm. we have a little bit more of a game plan this time and I think it's going to work out just yeah. fine. Fine. Sounds great, man. But today we are here to talk about the big topic Nebula and their re-releases. So my yeah. first question is to that, um, who got the idea of this kind of re-releases? Alright, here's how it happened. Um, Gabriel uh, Fiori from Heavy Psych Sounds, right? Yeah. Since we were working together with the freaks and stuff, um, and given my... Uh, past resume of being in Nebula, uh, he's the one who kind of really came up with the idea, you know, and he was like, hey, you know, is it possible, can you contact the guy, is, uh, uh, and let's re-release these records, you know, he's claiming that they were records that really kind of helped the genre, and special records that came out that, you know, that need to have a re-release, everyone's doing these, you know, anniversary releases, all that kind of stuff, so... I don't know if that's how the thought came into his head, mm. but, uh, you know, he came to me and asked if I could go and approach the rest of the guys. Yeah. So that's how really the uh, the idea came about, was Gabe wanting to release these records mm. on his label. Yeah. Nice. Um, I saw something weird, because, you know, the band Nebula is also back, but they don't um, advertise the um, re-releases on their Facebook or on their website. It's kind of like, okay, I have to be a heavy psych sound nerd, you can say, to inform okay. about their products, you know, and I get the information, ah, Nebula, they are releasing things, but you know, also Eddie is uh, with Tom and I don't know who the drummer is back, also planning re-release, uh, not re-releases, planning to um, kind of reunion shows. It's kind of weird, for me it seems like it's Parallel, you know, you are doing the re-release of stuff, and Eddie is bringing Nebula back. Because I thought first both are somehow connected to each other to, you know, to su support support the re-releases and also to support the reunion. Right. Yeah. That's, it did spark some kind of interest. Uh, interesting. Uh, I don't know if I want to say controversy, uh, but there's nothing controversial really about it. You mm. know, it's. Um, when Gabe came to me with the idea, um, 
you know, I kind of, from the get-go, was like, well, that sounds like a great idea. Um, I had no intentions on trying to reunite the band or join the band again or anything like that. You know, my, my thought was, well, let's put out those old records and, you know, just kind of rejoice what we accomplished. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, when I talked with Eddie, Eddie right away was like, hey, we can play some shows, you know, and, and I was like, well, you know, it's, that wasn't my really intention on mm. doing these re-releases, yeah. you know. So, um, you know, after the ball got rolling with the releases, um, Gabe asked, hey, you know, you guys want to do a couple of just reunion shows? Yeah. And I thought, well, that, uh, that I'll do. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll mm -hmm. do a couple of shows and have, it, have you know, one last cool little hurrah and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, I think Eddie kind of took me saying, like, hey, hold on, let's, let's first deal with coming to an agreement with these reissues, with the label. Let's, let's not just jump into to something real quick, you know. Let's, yeah. let's first take it, you know, step by step. Step by step, and yeah. I think he kind of uh, took that as me saying, I'm not going to play with you again, mm. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, um, and I get it, and that's cool, you know. Mm. Uh, but I'm thinking that the with the idea of the reissues coming out, that it did probably spark a little fire underneath his feet and said, hey, cool, you know, like, I think finally there's something that's going to bring it back, and that, now let's roll with it and let's bring it back. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, they never really claim to have broken up. Yeah. Well, they claim to jump into a hiatus, hiatus. if you will. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think this was the, the, you know, this is what kicked the rock that they were kind of sleeping under. Mm. And, you know, now Eddie's got a chance to, okay, cool, man. It's, we've got it, something that's going to help elevate and let's get back to it. Yeah. Um, so I think that that was Eddie kind of, you know, taking his own reins and, his, you know, jumping into like, okay, here's, here's the way to really get back into it, yeah. you know? So more power to him. Yeah. Uh, and that's just where the the terminology, I think, is what caused mm. the controversy. Uh, you know, I mean, mm. when people say reunion, you think, oh, cool, you know, it's the you know original members reuniting or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, I think reunion was the wrong term, you know. Mm. It should have just been the return. Return. You know, and he's returning, and he's returning doing his thing, you know, mm. and so that's where I think, like, the confusion kind yeah. of uh, was created, and, um, you know, like I said, I, I would have been in, into doing a few shows here and there just as, you know, an awesome party. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't have any intentions on, on rejoining the band. I'm, I'm pretty much happy where I'm at and pretty busy with the Freaks, yeah. and, you know, that's how I'm moving on on my path. Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm glad that if this did kind of, you know, wake up Eddie out of his hibernation and, and get things rolling, then, like I said, more power to him. Yeah. Uh, Ned is back. Let's hope that they can kick ass just as much as they've always kicked ass. Yeah. And, you know, all good. Yeah. No, uh, no hard feelings on my end or anything, you know. Yeah. And, you know, the future is upon us. Yeah. So let's see what happens, you know. So that's that's how I just wanted to kind of clarify that confusion because yeah. there was social media backlash, um, you know, all this and that. And, you know, it is what it is yeah. in that term, you know, but it is kind of a yeah. cliche, terrible term that kind of it's there for a reason. Yeah. So yeah, you know, that's uh, that's how it kind of happened. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the aspect of vinyl is uh, very important today and for me I'm also a very big vinyl collector of the stoner rock genre and uh, like you mentioned before um, there are two different um, editions of the vinyl the classic um, standard black and also the limited color um, vinyl but I want to ask you which record I see I mean I see the big shelf of records in your back um, which record do you own where you say man this is personal my most Expensive. I don't uh, mean especially in money, but um, where you connect something personal, personal with it. Uh, yeah, man, I got a lot of those records. Yeah. <laughs> you know, every single one of them, really, I'm connected personally to. You know, because I remember if it was given to me, if I bought it, where I bought it. You know, mm -hmm. um, me, I have a kind of a. I used to have a job where I was 
driving around a lot, you know, and, you know, at the time there was a speed limit, you know, so you have to drive 55 miles per hour, right, mm. uh, or say 120 kilometers per hour, right, so I had to make these deliveries of, of these things, and I thought, you know what, if I drove the speed limit at 120 kilometers per hour, and this is the distance I have to go, right, mm. that means the office thinks I'm going to be on the road for four hours, yeah. right, but if I speed and I get it done in two hours and I have two hours free on the road and I can hit every single thrift shop that I see as I stop and go through the record bins, you know, yeah. I mean, that was how I was doing my, my record collecting. Yeah. 50 cents here, a dollar there. Two dollars, come on, you know. Yeah. So um, a lot of my records, you know, have that kind of personal connection for me that it was more part of the hunt. Yeah. And I've scored like some uh, some Lenny Bruce records, mm. you know, the old comedian guy, yeah. for fifty cents. But yeah, when you do go ahead and look them up, they're like fifty dollars, you know, in value, all that kind of stuff. Awesome, cool, but I never really plan on selling them, you know. I think that was my biggest regret was mm. that when I was young, I needed some money, so I sold off my punk rock collection as a whole. Yeah. And you know, that's the only regret I really have because yeah. <laughs> now I can have those records. Yeah. So um, yeah, I love I love uh, collecting vinyl and hearing vinyl and listening to it. You know, I I, I don't know if I have one particular record that mm. is like this is my holy grail of all my records. Mm. You know, um, but I'm I'm like you. You know, mm. I hold it dear and I love listening to the music. Mm. You know, so so yeah, and you know the cool thing with, with uh, these Nebula releases is that uh, you know another thing that. I was thinking was awesome. This is this will be easy, you know. Yeah. We just give Heavy Psych Sounds the records, let them deal with pulling off the music, let them deal with redoing the covers, yeah. you know. It's just do a quick, easy thing, and it's everybody rock and roll, you know. Yeah. Uh, Mark Abshire, he's the one who was a little, was a little bit more attached with like, well, you know what? If we're gonna do this, yeah. let's do this, and make it something special. Yeah. So it was his idea to kind of add, you know, all the. Um, Life tricks. Extra, extra tracks, yeah. things like that. It was him who dove in and said, hey, you know, let's really make these records look good again. Mm -hmm. So I think that they're, they might be gatefolded, all yeah. that kind of stuff, what they weren't before. So, you know, I got to hand it to Mark for really jumping in and spending a lot of work to mm -hmm. really make these reissues something super special yeah. so that when people do get it, if they already have it, mm -hmm. they will be getting something that's raising the bar on it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that way, guys like you, guys like me, they're like, yeah, man, you know, check this out, yeah. flip it open, you know. So, yeah, you know, it's it's much better than, than that small little disc, you know, when you have that big 12-inch, 24-inch, yeah. open-wide, you know, gate full type vinyl. So, um, it's cool, I think, how Heavy Psych Sounds also does a limited color. Yeah. You know, so then... Guys like me and you, like, no, nah, we're going to get that yeah, one. Of course, you know? it's a limited one. Yeah. So it, it just adds to that uh, that whole record hunt, mm. you know, euphoria that we get yeah. from it. I mean, for you who played in two cult bands, Fu Manchu and Nebula, and who's also um, collecting vinyls, and I don't know where you buy records, also on Discogs, or, for example, or eBay and see for Nebula records, I don't know. The Apollo record was sold, I don't know, for 60 or 50 bucks. And I know when you, um, back in, was it 2005 or 2006, I saw you in Lübeck and the uh, year after in Hamburg. You also sold a record for, I don't know, 15 or 20 bucks. And now after years, you see, aha, uh -huh, why is that record, I don't know, selling maybe also for a hundred of dollars and you're thinking oh man who's paying that isn't that somehow silly okay yes yeah. <laughs> it is you know yeah. and like i said you know i found records in thrift store bins for 50 cents that are valued at 50 60 dollars and, mm. and well above you know um it's that's the art of collecting i guess mm. you know um it's interesting that yeah you think of, say, records that I was on that people are paying that amount of money, yeah. you know? Um, but that's what people do. Mm. You know, people, people do. If people really want, you know, when you got hardcore collectors that yeah. have to have this in complete, pristine condition, no 
bent corners, no nothing, you know. Mm. I mean, people, sometimes people have more money than they know what to do with, yeah. you know. I wish I could say that I did, but, uh, you know, there are people that do, and yeah. they're the ones that go ahead and pay for that. But it is pretty amazing, I think, mm. you know. You, when you look at value of certain records and what people do actually uh, purchase. Yeah. Um, I mean, I did kind of... Uh, use some of um, records that I held on in my collection yeah. you know, of, of Nebula stuff, mm-hmm. um, like the very first pressing of the very first Nebula single that was a split single with an Italian band, That's All Folks. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was trying to get the freaks to Europe and I needed, you know, I needed to raise some money, yeah, you know, I, so I, I put up that record for auction, mm. you know, it was really kind of heartwarming how people started bidding on this thing you know they knew that it was going to kind of continue my musical journey and stuff and they supported me with all that kind of stuff yeah Uh, so you know i think people like that yeah you know the ones who really kind of keep things live yeah um would you also say that the brand and band nebula became um, over the years some kind of cult band because for me I did an interview it's just an example with the band House of Broken Promises I know that you toured also with them or played shows and um, we talked about bands and the singer said yeah Rune Romano that's a guy he uh, did so many bands and then I came this up in my mind yeah they are so long around and for instance you played in so many bands and also Nebula when they announce a reunion they play They, they will play here in Europe on some major stoner rock festival first and the second is not uh, in the morning or something, no, very, um, very, very far at the end of the show, in the evening, no, I don't know if it's a headliner sl- uh, slot or something, but it's some kind of where I think, oh, they know, they released six, seven years, not a single song or something like that, just announced, um, Uh, some um, reun- no, not reunion shows. Um, re, what do you say? Um, return. Return. <laughs> yeah, returning shows. <laughs> and uh, we'll release some re-releases. You know, it's actually nothing new. Of course, the design and everything, but they are sometimes so big, and especially the classic records. I think the first three until uh, Apollo. They are very, very uh, collectors' items, I guess. Yeah, I mean. I'm- I think that's how Gabe from Heavy Psych Sounds yeah. looked at the records and why he wanted them on his label. Mm. You know, they did impact the genre. Mm. Yeah, it's cool um, being in bands that have impacted the genre. Yeah. You know, so um, it's it's it is interesting. You know, like wow, man, we we did kind of pull something off that people really hold dear. Mm. So. Um, Yeah, that's, that's a bit of a trip, you know. But the cool thing I think for me is, wow, man! I, if I s- sat there and had to like put a resume out, yeah. you know, I have those two bands on my resume, and I was at the start of both those bands, and now both those bands are are still kicking ass. Mm. Are reaching, hopefully, will kick ass. Um, you know, that's a uh, that's a good feeling for me, mm. you know, and I think that that's. That's, but uh, yeah, I think I think it, it is kind of a cool feeling that uh, I was a part of something that, that mm. people really dig, you know. Mm. And I'm hoping that I can keep that uh, keep that up with mm. the freaks, and that you know we keep on having our stuff at par to, that people dig. Yeah. People come, we'll have a good time, yeah. and we party. You know, yeah. <laughs> what's better than that? <laughs> So yeah, um, let's take a time capsule and throw the time back when you and Eddie left Fu Manchu. Um, I guess there was a special reason for it also musically. And you can hear it obviously on the first EPs and the first record. Do you remember what kind of time it was um, when you sit back in the rehearsal room and say, all right, we want to try different things which we did before. Do you remember? That when it you know came up to the re-releases. Yeah, I think that 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 really took. Um, that could have been a really big reason on on why we split with Fu Manchu. Mm. You know, of course everybody knows the cliches of, of personalities clashing and all that kind of stuff. You know, mm. and 
that's not the stuff I really want to go into. Yeah. Um, but when it comes down to, say, the musical aspect yes. of it, uh, Eddie and I, we were getting turned on to a bunch of, a, a wider spectrum of music, yeah. really, you know, um, which was still a heavy music, you know. Mm. It wasn't just punk rock or Led Zeppelin and ACDC, you know. Mm. I mean, that's when we really started discovering um, the greatness of Hawkwind. Yeah. You know, and a lot of, of German prog stuff like Can and Amon yeah. Duel too. You know, that's when we started hearing, you know, um, all these other different styles of highly energized music that we were like, man, you know, we got to tap into some of that stuff too. You know, we were getting inspired by these things. Yeah. And, um, you know, I don't think that uh, the other two guys in the band were as into that style of of the music as we were, mm. you know, and that might have been where a bit of the clash kind of started happening musically mm. in Fu Manchu. Um, you know, hearing uh, some awesome spiders from Mars, you know, and some Bowie, mm. and like, there's a lot of acoustic guitars in there, man. Acoustic guitars can be thrown into the music, so that way when the electrics come in, wow, it just makes it that much more heavy, right? Mm. Um, and, you know, the other two guys are like, they actually start putting out ads of like, you will never hear an acoustic guitar on a Fu Manchu record, yeah. you know? So, yeah, I think that it was a, a good reason why, you know, we split from them because we were into experimenting with mm. different sounding, you know, acoustic instruments or even keyboards. I mean, I'm still the one I think out of the whole bunch is like, horns are cool if they're used properly, yeah. you know, and everybody horns no way man you know so um it's kind of funny because we actually do have some horns on the next uh the next freaks record so mm -hmm. it's it's kind of funny but i think that it was it was a big impact on on the split between um mm -hmm. us and, and or the Fumanchu split mm -hmm. uh you know i was we were really into uh or at least i was really into a swedish band called union carbide productions mm -hmm. Which were really into like you know MC5 and and that kind of you know really high energy mm -hmm. rock with the total punk edge, and they're throwing sitars on their on their you know mm -hmm. music you know and I thought that was the coolest thing ever, you know and it would have never never flown in in mm -hmm. a Fu record you know mm -hmm. so that I think was the best thing that uh, for me on exiting that band was we were able to open up the avenue for a bunch of different sounding tones mm -hmm. and not having any barriers to, to you know keep anything out mm -hmm. so yeah that's that is a pretty pretty good aspect mm -hmm. on on how the split and how those first nebula records were so energetic and in your face because mm -hmm. we wanted to be energetic and in your face you mm -hmm. know and check this out while we're being all energetic and in your face we're gonna throw a sitar in there yeah. you know so it was experimental for sure yeah definitely I mean you can hear it when the fans they will get in January February and March free records you can hear well a wide range of music where I say well that's cool you know the band which is open-minded and not just sticking to their sound is repeating 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 it's some kind of yeah it's getting it's getting boring you know and, yeah, uh, that, that could be definitely a, a wooden stake in the heart if you, you know, if you don't kind of uh, challenge yourself or, you know, you just stick to that format, then mm -hmm. yes, you're right, it's going to get boring. I, I agree. You know? For instance? And I think that that is also me personally, you know, when I ended up leaving Nebula, mm -hmm. I was at another point in, in my mind where, you know, same thing, I want to get even more experimental mm -hmm. than what Nebula is doing nowadays, you know, so that was another aspect of mm -hmm. me taking off from Nebula and then starting this whole new thing that I'm doing now, yeah. you know, and you know, I was the drummer, I was yeah. the drummer of, these, of both these bands, right, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't think anybody really thought I could bring anything to the table other than just playing drums, yeah. so it made a slow start for me with all this freak stuff, and I had to learn a lot, mm -hmm. you know, going from the first Freaks record to what we're doing now, yeah. But, um, you know, I think that's what my drive was, was always to try and experiment mm. 
definitely. I remember one part of the Apollo Nebula record. I mean, I can hear a goat. I mean, it's an intro or something or an overdub. I don't know how to say. And I mean, I hear the riff. Do, 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 do. And then there's some, a goat. And it's like, what? Is it a goat or something? How cool is that? You know, I know that many bands are picky about it and say, ah, oh, no, a goat in a song. What are you doing? We are rock band. Rock bands uh, never do this kind of thing. And yeah. I remember that back, I don't know, it's 13 years ago, in my teenager years, and it was like, yeah, man, how cool is that? The band is, you know, is um, pecking a goat in one of their songs. Yeah. Well, you know, with, with with that comment, I think there is there is a David Bowie lyric yeah. that really adds to, to that, right? Where the lyric says, immersed in Carly's uniform of imagery, mm -hmm. you know? And that's part of music right it music creates an image in your mind mm. you know depending on on the emotions it might affect on you or the energy it might give you you know and the imagery that you get from music is very important mm -hmm. so at that time in nebula's life you know um that goat in there and with you know some of the things that we were into it was all adding to the imagery of the music yeah. and that's that's why I think that uh, people might not have understood. Why are you putting a goat in there? Well, you know, I mean, if you listen to the song, maybe you listen to the words, maybe you take the whole picture, mm. and you'll see what we're talking about, having a goat in there doing the bad. <laughs> mm. So, uh, yeah, you know, taking chances, it's you got to do it, mm. or you get killed. Um, my last question is about the whole Nibra re-releases thing. Uh, can you maybe imagine to release a Nebula live record from the old years, especially just on vinyl or even tape? I saw the tape is also on the rise. Right. I think um, I think it's talking with heavy psych sounds, mm. you know, and uh, when Mark came up with uh, the idea of bonus tracks and stuff, you know, uh, and things that we were that we were finding mm -hmm. as bonus tracks and stuff, you know, I was like, "Hey, man, you know, let's let's not just give everything away at the start." Yeah. You know, let's let's build this up, you know. And, and we've collected so many different live shows and so many different other outtakes and B sides and unreleased things that we recorded um, because Gabe was asking, "Hey, you know, is there a way that we can, you know?" do something beyond just the three records yeah. and you know we were like well you know let's let's do exactly that you yeah. know we already have the bonus songs for each release you know but now we have a, a, this pool of all these other um, cool things that we can that we can add on so I'm thinking that uh, we will be doing that yeah. you know as part of the heavy psych sounds nice. uh, reissues then we'll finally do not just a live record, but, you know, live recordings, mm. uh, like I said, uh, B-sides and outtakes yeah. and unreleased stuff, you know. So it's more going to be more than just, say, Nebula live in, yeah. in Hulk, right? It's going to be kind of a, you know, more like a Ted Nugent, you know, mm. intensities, ten cities, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and it's from this show over here, from that show over there. Mm. It's, uh, you know, recorded stuff from this record that didn't make the record yeah. you know so it is going to be a lot of bonus tracks and a lot of things like that mm. and i think that's that's going to be something cool because it is going to be something new mm. that's still old yeah sounds interesting i'm looking right. forward for that definitely and i think also a lot of vinyl and collectors and nebula fans also um, I see you answered all my questions, Room. Is there okay. anything you want to say or to, or to share to your fans, to the viewers or something? Well, the cool thing about about 2018 right now and what we have going on, what we're talking about, you know, here, um, I mean, I'm looking at Fu Manchu is, I guess, releasing a new record in February. Yes. Nebula is doing all these reissues that are mm -hmm. going to start happening, I think, maybe February, March. Yes. Um, you know, the Freaks record that I'm mm -hmm. working on right now is going to be probably released in March and stuff, you know. So for me, I'm completely elated, you know. I'm like, holy shit, Dad. And I, I'm attached to something that is still a big, heavy freight train that's rolling, 
mm. you know, down the track. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to a pretty awesome 2018, and I think that uh, everything encompassing all that, you know, it just, you know, there's no way that we're, we're going to stop doing what we do, Definitely. you know, so I'm looking forward to it, you know, everything yeah. is kind of coming into a, a bigger a bigger snowball as it's rolling down the hill. Yeah. So I'm excited for 2018, you know, and I'm excited that, uh, that everything that I've been involved with in the past is still active. Yeah. Uh, and I give everybody more power and encouragement, you know, I say to Eddie, rock out, you yeah. know, I say to Scott Hill, keep on rocking out, you know, because I'm going to still rock, be rocking out and, here we are. We're still one big happy family, yeah. you know. So the tree is just getting bigger on, on you know, the branches of rock and roll here, I guess. Well, I don't know, man. Um, thanks to you, Kai, for no taking the time, you know. Every time again. Yeah, yeah. And we'll see you next time the freaks are in Europe. Definitely. We will room. Thank okay. you very much for the interview. Thank you for your time. See you next time. Right on. Right on, Bye. brother. Have a good night. Thank you. You Cheers. too. Metalhead, Metalhead TV. Metalhead.